Hello and good evening. You're watching DD News. I'm Gautam Roy. And tonight on this special show, while the world's 20 biggest bars have been pondering ways to respond to the terrorism gauntlet thrown once again in the shape of the Paris attacks in Turkey, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given a 10-point proposal to combat terror. It's a comprehensive action planned and if the world walks the talk against terror along the path shown by Prime Minister Modi, terror can be defeated. Let's take a look at the PM's prescription to cure the world of this malaise. Prime Minister Narendra Modi proposed 10 points measure to tackle changing character of terrorism. At a working dinner of G20 summit in Turkey's Antalya, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for stronger role for the United Nations in dealing with one of the greatest human challenges. In his 10-point proposal, Prime Minister said that the world must act in unison and have one voice against terrorism without any political consideration. He said, world should not make any discrimination between states. Prime Minister called for isolating sponsors and supporters of terrorism. He asked the world leaders to restructure the international legal framework. Prime Minister Modi said world should adopt a comprehensive convention on terrorism without delay. He asked to prevent supply of arms to terrorists, disrupt terrorism movement, curb and criminalize terror finance. Prime Minister Modi asked for increasing international cooperation in intelligence and counter-terrorism. He stressed on securing cyberspace, minimize use of internet and social media for terror activities. Involve religious leader, thinker, opinion makers for a social movement against extremism. Prime Minister Modi asked leaders to dealing terror and religion and work together to counter radicalization. With Amit Pal Singh, Sudhir Yadav's report, DD News, Antalya. So that's uh, what the Prime Minister says uh, can uh, lead to uh, tackling of terror on a global scale. Uh, uh, let's uh, talk about it further. We have G. Parthasarthi with us, uh, noted former diplomat and strategic expert. We also have Prakash Singh, uh, former DG BSF and uh, well-known security expert in our studio. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Parthasarthi. What do you make of uh, this, uh, uh, well, agenda really the Prime Minister has tried to set uh, for tackling uh, terrorism at a global scale, do you feel that the world has now enough resolve to come together to walk uh, the talk down the path that has been shown by the PM? Well, I think that's the, that's the larger issue. The most important thing is that the Prime Minister has seized an appropriate moment hmm. uh, to place our thinking before the World Forum because the G20 is after all a forum of the 20 most uh, strong or the strongest economies in the world who have the financial clout to get others to fall in line. Uh, now, uh, what he has said is, is uh, really been said in bits and pieces. The two central points being, firstly, to have the, again, another push for a comprehensive convention on tourism, uh, on terrorism, which in my view is easier now than it was to get mm -hmm. some 10 or 20 years ago, especially with Iran having come in, but still okay. there are going to be problems. Do you call the Hezbollah terrorist group, which Iran supports? Hmm. Uh, the Al-Nusra front is supported by Saudi Arabia. So these are largely complications within what we call as the Islamic world. Hmm. Now, um, the point is to push this. But what is also called for is a comprehensive strategy to deal with terrorism, uh, which will c naturally flow from a convention, because hmm. you can't just have a convention and not a strategy <coughs> implemented. Um, and I think uh, the, uh, he's, he's brought it back as a principal global challenge. Hmm. Let us realize that when Mumbai was attacked, not one of these Western powers was willing to move in this direction. Uh, secondly, if you took a look at the global media, they described the terrorists who attacked Mumbai as gunmen and not even right. as terrorists. Yes. The double standards hmm. are evident when you see how they report uh, the... Uh, developments in Paris. Even with what but happened in Beirut. It's, yeah. So I think what, what, what is it? It's, it's a good opportunity. Uh, we should mobilize the world. We should work through the UN. Hmm. And most importantly, I think if we can get the five permanent members of the Security Council on board, it'd be much easier to take this forward. Okay. Though there will be reservations, as I said, between contesting hmm. parties like <coughs> Iran and Saudi Arabia. Also, not you to mentioned, speak, not to speak you mentioned our, uh, Hezbollah and uh, yeah, Israel, yeah, yeah. not to... Uh, not, to, not to speak of our Pakistani yes, friends who yes. will resist this. Right. And uh, it's not just but Pakistan. One thing good, there's no such thing as a good terrorist or a bad terrorist. <laughs> In my view, the only good terrorist is a dead terrorist. <laughs> uh, may they not rest in peace also. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Singh, uh, if I could ask you from a security standpoint, uh, do you feel that... Uh, 
this was the best time uh, to put across uh, these points that the Prime Minister has and uh, this is where uh, uh, this moment can be leveraged uh, best to uh, get uh, the kind of results that India needs. Uh, to tackle terrorism, not just uh, at home, but uh, all over the globe. See, the 10 points which he has enunciated, they are general principles. Hmm. And it is just as well that he has utilized this opportunity, this forum, to project uh, India's thinking on all those 10 points. Uh, and I don't think there could be any disagreement on uh, most of those 10 points. There would be a broad agreement, of course, if you go into the nitty-gritty and in, in, in greater detail, there are bound to be differences. Hmm. But uh, broadly, one would say, uh, one could say that there would be agreement on these. Uh, the point is uh, when it comes to the actual application of it. Hmm. Uh, for example, you, uh, the Prime Minister said that uh, terrorism has to be combated uh, irrespective and there should be no political consideration. Yes. Now, this is the, this is the, this is the point where uh, differences emerge. Hmm. Uh, I mean, even a, uh, the superpower like United States, their attitude to terrorism is, is uh, totally circumscribed by political considerations. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, most of the countries, uh, uh, their attitude is uh, influenced by political consideration. Then you talk of isolating um, uh, terrorists, um, yes. uh, ostracizing them, so to say. Mm -hmm. Here again, uh, I mean, uh, you, you can see it. It is there bef uh, before you that uh, certain countries, even though they are, uh, they are the nurseries of terrorism, even though they have been exporting terrorism to different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and yet. Uh, they get uh, billions and billions of dollars in uh, assistance. Yes. So, I mean, You're again it's, referring it's, to it's one thing uh, in initiating a general principle. It's uh, also one thing uh, agreeing to it in principle. But when it comes to actual practical uh, application of that, hmm. then we find that there are huge differences and uh, all sorts of considerations come into play. And that is the main reason why we have not been able to agree. Mm. In spite of, I think, more than two decades of discussions on the subject, uh, do, on a comprehensive... Do you think what's happened in Paris has changed that... Uh... Well, to an extent, yes, but not very substantially. Not mm. very substantially. Yes, uh, there would be a general uh, consensus that, yes, uh, um, terrorism has to be tackled and mm. they should speak in one voice and there should be a global strategy. Yes, mm. they will say this. But... Uh, you see, uh, again, you will find that um, hmm. uh, even in Syria, you see, you can see the superpowers are uh, uh, are not uh, on the same hmm. page. That's what because uh, some people are saying that you know the war on terror began uh, 14 years back, <coughs> and it uh, then primarily became uh, a war against Osama bin Laden and the Al Qaeda, and now it's <coughs> uh, I beg your pardon. Now it's a war against the Islamic State and it's confined to Syria, and uh, because of what's happened in Paris, uh, because <coughs> the IS is behind it. And that's where it will stay. Uh, but uh, that is not something that we would want. Well, let, let us be, look, uh, look, at, look at the United States. Their war on terror. 2,000 of their soldiers have been killed by the Taliban. Hmm. Now they are not willing to call the Taliban a terrorist organization because they want to strike a political deal. Hmm. So as I said, which the this Taliban is, doesn't seem to want. <laughs> which the Taliban doesn't seem to want. Uh, and they are a bit upset with Pakistan still supporting the Haqqani group, but mm. uh, they are not doing anything about it. Mm. So I think, uh, the, as, as Mr. Prakash Singh says, this is not going to be easy because nations talk broad principles, but mm. when push comes to shove, they don't necessarily implement it. As I, as, as I said, are you going to persuade uh, Qatar and Saudi Arabia not to support the Al Nusra Front? Are you going to prevent the Iranians from supporting Hezbollah, who, who they say are fighting for Shia rights in, mm. in, in Lebanon? So uh, it, it really depends on, on, on the situation. But the important thing we should uh, insist on in this is that any country which does not act against a designated terrorist group, mm. say lashkar e taiba the jaish e mohammed these are all designated international terrorist groups those con those countries should be subject to sanctions you can push for it you can create a climate for it you can scare the countries <coughs> whether it work in an ultimate analysis we'll have to wait and see okay but do you think uh, that is the kind of approach uh, mr prakash singh is required uh, to at least uh, tackle the problem that we ourselves face uh, which is uh, ask for sanctions. We've been uh, making indirect references to Pakistan uh, on international forums, but now is it time to be more direct? Again, it's a 
the question, the political considerations come into play. See, Pakistan mm. should have been declared a terrorist state long, long ago. And at one stage, uh, US was on the point of uh, declaring it as such. But again, political considerations prevented them. And uh, you can see, I mean, uh, billions of dollars continue to pour into Pakistan. They are bolstering the economy of the country. Mm. Mm. In spite of all that Pakistan is doing, I mean, mm. uh, Pakistan has been branded as the most dangerous place on earth. I mean, mm. a, a country which exports terrorism to different parts of the world, and okay. yet uh, uh, okay. they have they have not been ostracized. Okay. Since, uh, since this path has been a little difficult to take, uh, is the approach of uh, insisting on uh, the earliest uh, signing of the International Convention on uh, Global Terrorism is uh, that the best workable alternative? No, that is an alternative which needs to be pursued. Hmm. But my point is that uh, since it is very unlikely that there would be a, a commonly agreed UN convention hmm. on terrorism. Hmm. It is still a distant prospect. We have to work towards it. Hmm. But that should not prevent us from strengthening our own security architecture to deal with terrorism. Obviously, we have to remember that this battle against terrorism, uh, we have to fight ourselves. No, nobody is, will come to our rescue when uh, we are face to face with terrorists, when, we are, hmm. uh, when the Islamic State or the Taliban starts making inroads into India. Hmm. Nobody will come to our rescue. They, they will uh, express probably words of sympathy, but that's all. But ultimately, we have to fight this battle ourselves. And right. are we prepared to fight that battle? That is a big question with, uh, which worries me because we are not. We are not. Mm -hmm. Our security architecture is very weak, very fragile. And uh, the most tragic part is that, uh, I mean, it's true that we inherited a weak uh, internal security apparatus uh, from the UPA. Mm. But have we cared to strengthen that? I'm sorry, it's, it's very difficult to give a positive answer. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's not been uh, thankfully tested to that extent also as far as, uh, you know, uh, the regime change, uh, since the regime change took place in 2014, but uh, we don't want that test to take place. Uh, but you feel that uh, uh, responding to it at home, uh, the challenges that we face on the security front, uh, the, particularly the, in, the internal security front, is uh, the best answer? No, in an ultimate analysis, there is no answer to strengthening your own domestic structures. Hmm. Look at the United States. They haven't had a terrorist attack since 2001. Mm -hmm. They've strengthened their intelligence uh, networks. They've strength, uh, they have strengthened. Busted. They have no, not not on not on U.S. soil. U.S. soil. Hmm. No, <clears throat> they have not. Now, uh, their intelligence network, their their security network, the coordination between the FBI and the police forces across the country is immense. Uh, but the one, one difference is that the FBI in a, in a given situation can overrule mm. uh, the local uh, police and, uh, and take over a crime scene. We don't have that provision in our constitution. Since you can't change the constitution, you will have to devise innovative measures. Take the states along. There is mm. no other way of doing this. Uh, uh, look, it took us uh, almost 24 hours to get the NSG to yeah. Mumbai. Because uh, we don't have they, police they, they, forces they, they, with yeah, their own uh, SWAT this, teams or yeah. tactical response teams. Now, th this sort of training is only by in India possible by a federal team. Mm -hmm. Have we increased the mobility? Have we improved uh, response times? I think Mr. Prakash Singh would be in a better position to say. But I, there, I, I, there, I, there I, is some I, debate I, on I, that. Some I, people say I that it uh, has some, improved. I, well, see, I, whatever uh, it's never movement has about. taken place is uh, a follow-up to the measures introduced by the by the Home Ministry in the wake of 27-11 yes, attacks. A, yes. a comprehensive set of measures hmm. were taken, initiated, and those have brought about certain improvement. The point is, what has the NDA government done to improve the internal security architecture? Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, there has been, a, I mean, uh, on one front, uh, there has been a movement backwards. I mean, it's a, uh, the police modernization. You see, police modernization, every year the center used to allocate funds for police modernization. Mm -hmm. Now the center has stopped doing that. They said that uh, with the uh, Finance Commission having increased the allocation for the states, mm. uh, we are delinking this scheme. And this scheme okay. will now be taken care of by the state government. But then it is and the responsibility the of the state governments, isn't and it? And the state governments being what they are. I mean, we are very despondent about uh, the state. But you state. cannot, uh, you cannot uh, penalize the center or uh, blame the center for I'm not uh, blaming states the not doing that. I'm bit. not blaming the center. I'm <laughs> saying that this is what has happened. The one the thing positive. The, the one thing, well, pos the, the one thing positive which was happening. 
the one thing positive which uh, continued um, which was happening hmm. with the central government uh, financing the moderation scheme that has also stopped and on the contrary there is no corresponding uh, improvement uh, or measures taken by the state government this, this is why i come back to our what i said there is a certain lacuna in our constitution compared to the americans as i said the okay. fbi can operate without state permission anywhere uh, we don't have the luxury of that uh, and uh, we are more democratic uh, than the us yeah I, and no. certain certain day certainly more federal uh, uh, more federal certainly i think we should uh, devise measures so that terrorism should come into a category of uh, foreign and policies of national security mm -hmm. so whether we like it or not how we implement it whom we get the finances is a different <clears throat> matter unless we are able to ensure that country wide there are police forces local forces to respond mm -hmm. immediately here the french police there took is a need time then to look yeah, to have for three or four hours in well, the united because... states they will they've got swat teams everywhere hmm. they can respond within an hour hmm. so i think instead of finding excuses center state and so on unless we devise measures to see every state in india hmm. has the capacity to deal with the terrorist threat I think we will be in trouble. Okay. Okay. You see, our and, talking of the constitution, mm -hmm. as Mr. Partha Sarthi said, you see, our constitution has a very basic flaw. Mm -hmm. That flaw, nobody is prepared to rectify that. Nobody is prepared even to touch that. That flaw is that at the time of framing of the constitution, the distribution of duties, Schedule A, Schedule B, Schedule C, we virtually copied from the Government of India Act from uh, of 1935. And well, I would not like to blame, blame the uh, the founding fathers uh, uh, for the simple reason that probably they could not foresee that a situation would arise. That this would be become the such police a huge and challenge. public order should have been in the concurrent challenge. list. You see, a lot of our problems flow from the fact that uh, police and public order are in the concurrent list, hmm. and therefore the kind of arrangement which Mr. Partha Sathi has been talking about that the that there is a federal force which is able to override uh, the jurisdiction and the and the authority of the local force that is not possible in India. Mm -hmm. So. and no uh, government uh, no government at center has uh, has had the courage i mean they would introduce amendments in the constitution uh, which are which have a vote catching um, uh, uh, opportunity but uh, this fundamental provision nobody is prepared to touch but, this but uh, uh, that can change very clearly and very quickly because uh, security is the first duty of the realm and if you uh, give it that perspective then perhaps uh, Uh, all the policy makers not just in the, but, at the center but also at the but, states uh, will uh, then uh, reconsider you see every time i have talked to the home ministry on this they say no no bhai this is very sensitive isko to aap mat kahiye isko to hum baat karenge to hamare upar log humko log khane ko daudenge that is the kind of response i get from the home ministry but why do you think that is uh, the response i th i think basically the fact is our structure is now federalized hmm. uh we have uh, regional parties wielding substantial clout in delhi mm hmm who for their own reasons do not want their past to be eroded but we will have to find a way to deal with emergency situations like a terrorist attack wherein uh, we ensure one way or another state or center that there are the resources to react but immediately but if they if they want the path i'll ask you a simple the thing if tomorrow nuclear power plant is a, the if, a, if a nuclear power is plant a huge is, onus. if a nuclear power plant is a step uh, is coming under siege hmm. can you flow, fly in federal forces to to deal with well armed terrorists today i mean it will take time it will take time so yeah. our terrorists not waiting for time mm. so i think uh, as i as i said and as prakash singh said we will have to evolve a national consensus on this that the center by taking these paths at least with regard to terrorism hmm. is not compromising the powers it's it is strengthening the country but you feel that this sort of an appropriation of powers is required uh, can't uh, the i can't uh, i can't see police forces i don't know perhaps you'd better i can't see with the present setup see, individual states being able to dispense department state why is that not possible when the nie act was drafted certain hmm. offenses were described as federal offenses yes uh, with the nie could uh, so motor take cognizance of hmm. now in respect of those or maybe we can select out of those also in respect of uh, certain crimes but that's just for the investigation kind, the the federal no. government should have the authority to move its forces its troops its its enforcement machinery 
hmm. and you should not rely on a on a fragile state uh, police machinery which but uh, why is which the is state unique. police machinery fragile Sh well, that, that well, <laughs> well don't bring me to that question <laughs> it, it, it's a battle which i have been fighting for the last 20 years and yet uh, you can see the enormous resistance uh, from the political establishment and okay. the bureaucracy Okay. And I mean, this is the strongest combination that you can think of in this country. If the politicians and the bureaucracy combine on one thing, just nothing can move. Nothing can move. And they have decided to stall police reform. And so it remains where it is in spite of the Supreme Court okay, directions. But that's, that's the situation at home. Hmm. Uh, if we return to the international level, which we started off with, yeah. <laughs> and then we uh, came to the state of affairs within the country, uh, do you feel that uh, now the world will act sincerely uh, to tackle terror in all its forms all over the globe in, you're not in i am not persuaded because yes this gives us a framework to seek wider international support for our concerns mm -hmm. meaning i'll give you a classic example headley and rana were both complicit in 2611 mm. the americans took two years to tell us about their existence mm. whereas they gave it to denmark earlier okay now, if you are able to develop relationships which enable you to, have, uh, to, to get that and a framework to get that sort of cooperation, mm. it is fine. But in an ultimate point analysis, we have not, we live in an imperfect world. And I'm a firm believer that even God won't help those who don't help themselves. We, uh, in, uh, can't this be done when we talk about uh, strengthening cybersecurity? Can't we have uh, a database where information as and when it comes in is fed in and then everybody with a certain clearance mm -hmm. can freely access it because then it will not be discretionary as to which information uh, do we Mr. give? I think Mr. Prakash Singh would be better Mr. to answer Prakash that. Singh, if you could I answer think that we question. are moving in that direction, in the direction of cybersecurity we are moving. And I Not think just for cyber security, all mm. data related to terrorism uh, related crimes, uh, it just goes up, it's there in the cloud and anybody who has the basic clearance to access it can access it. Then it's not up to then me, if I'm US, whether I'll give the information to India about uh, Rana and you know the other perpetrators. There are, there it's are, just there. there. I can are, access it. There are schemes, <clears throat> but unfortunately, they are not progressing with the speed uh, they should have been, like the net grid scheme, hmm. the uh, then the CCTNS scheme. Uh, I mean, they, these should have been really pushed through, but uh, these schemes are uh, at a very slow pace. They are moving forward. Then, I mean, uh, while we are on the subject. Everyone seems to have forgotten about NCTC, the hmm. National Counterterrorism Center. I mean, it was uh, trumpeted as the answer to I mean, some kind of coordination uh, among all the states uh, to counter the threat of terrorism. Of hmm. course, uh, the bill was not very well drafted. And but so there were some there were, inherent problems that uh, could there be There were inherent surmounted. problems, but those problems could be addressed and okay. the NCTC should, uh, should have been put in place. But nobody talks about it because it's a, it's a hot potato. I mean, everybody, the, the states say, start saying that there's, um, you are invading our turf, you are uh, violating the federal principles and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. well, you see, but uh, they have to agree on this. Uh, uh, and, uh, and if there is so much resistance, at least we can say, all right, states which uh, subscribe mm -hmm. to NCTC, you be on board, rest, all right, you handle terrorist problems on your own. So tomorrow, I guess the first uh, tomorrow, thing to tackle then is this no, no, turf tomorrow. war. Uh, between nations, between within nations, uh, between the centre and states, and between states. Look, look, because, tomorrow. Because uh, it seems that uh, tackling terrorism is uh, largely caught up in a turf war. No, no, no. no yeah. But the, the best example is if a state has a terrorist uh, incident, uh, incident, and they have not subscribed to NCTC. Hmm. All right, centre can say now you uh, stew in your own news. I mean, then, then they would realize how important but the it is. But centre can't do that. Uh, I know, but <laughs> not, not publicly at least. <laughs> But uh, what is the way out? I mean, either doing nothing or move forward to an extent. Out of 29 states, let 15 be on board. Mm -hmm. All right, 14 will fall in gradually. Okay. But NCTC should, have been, should be established. Why nobody talks about it, I fail to understand. Mm -hmm. So this, this surrender of uh, some of your powers for the greater good, mm. that uh, is something that perhaps is required at the international stage and uh, within the country as well. And, uh, Look, if you are finding it so difficult within the country, <laughs> you can imagine what it is at the international stage. But as I said, in the international stage, countries respect power and influence. Hmm. The more India develops its economy, its power and its strength, the more people will be willing to cooperate with you. That's, That's the uh, reality. That's the bottom line. And that's bound to happen. We're uh, banking on that. Uh, more uh, power to India and uh, 
safer a safer world that's uh, what we want and uh, let's hope that uh, happens yeah. uh, but all said and done it's good the prime minister has raised this yeah. and brought back with the initiative that is taken uh, yeah. thanks a lot for joining us uh, tonight and let's see how the world moves forward in protecting the world better because uh, without uh, that uh, sort of a consensual approach uh, towards uh, terrorism there is very little progress that is possible thanks for joining us tonight stay tuned to dd news